If a company is considering returning capital to shareholders, it's really going to be looking at the balance sheet and in particular with a focus on retained earnings and the balance of retained earnings, but also the company will be focused on its level of cash. Since if it was to return capital to shareholders, this would be depleting the cash balance. Assuming the company had a high retained earnings and or excess cash balance, it would then engage in the following flow chart. It would have the high retained earnings or cash balance. So then it would be looking at the rate of return on capital investment. And if that was greater than the weighted average cost of capital, the company would then be reinvesting in other projects. But if the rate of return on capital investment was less than the weighted average cost of capital, the company would be looking to return that to shareholders in the form of repurchasing shares or paying cash dividends. So let's take a moment here to discuss the difference between dividends and share buybacks. First of all, with dividends, keep in mind that they could be a one-time dividend or an ongoing dividend. They would also then contribute to the yield on a stock if they were ongoing regular dividends. They would have no impact on shares outstanding or EPS. We need to keep in mind that often share buybacks, on the other hand, are often preferable to dividends. Why? Well, it's partly because dividends are considered more permanent for the company. And also, dividends cannot be turned down by the investor. Also, dividends can create an additional tax burden for the investor. So let's switch over now to look at share buybacks, which would reduce the number of shares outstanding. Obviously, this would increase the earnings per share from the reduction of shares outstanding. And share buybacks are generally seen as a positive market signal. And this is really due to the implication that the company considers the shares undervalued. Share buyback can also be used to alter the capital structure. So a buyback would obviously decrease the proportion of equity and increase the proportion of debt. Share buyback can also offset dilution, which may have been caused by the issuance of stock options. So let's discuss some important dates for dividends. The first one would be the declaration date, which is the date on which the board of directors announces and approves the payment of a dividend. And if we look below, this declaration would include the size of the dividend being issued, and it would outline the record date and the payment date, which we're going to discuss in a moment. The next important date would be the ex-dividend date, and this is the first day that the stock would trade without a dividend. Note that the company does not set the ex-dividend date, it is set by the stock exchange where the company's stock is traded. If we look below, the ex-dividend date typically occurs up to three days before the record date. Purchasers of shares on or after the ex-dividend date are not entitled to a dividend. And then we would have the record date. And this is the date on which the investor must be on the company's books in order to receive a dividend. Record date is set by the company. When an investor purchases a stock on an exchange, it takes time for the investor's information to be updated on the company's books. If we look below, we can see that in North America, it takes about two business days for a trade to settle. And finally, we have the payment date, which is the date on which the dividend is actually paid to shareholders. Looking below, we can see that dividend payments may be either mailed or electronically transferred to the accounts of shareholders. Now you can see here that we are using the Excel template, number three, capital return template. If you didn't get a chance to download this in the previous lesson, scoot back there and grab yourself a copy and we're right here in column H of that template. So a great place to start with this particular template here on the buyback tab is over at the equity schedule here. We can see that the company is going to be spending $5 million on a share buyback. What you could start with here is the ending balance for common equity. That should flow over to the beginning balance here, and it should enable you to complete this section, which is referred to as a corkscrew. 
Now, similarly, we're going to have a corkscrew down here for retained earnings. Again, starting with the ending balance, which you should be able to get from the balance sheet. That'll flow into the beginning balance. You can pull in net income, and that should allow you to arrive at an end balance. Once these equity schedules are complete, you'd be in a position where you could fill in the cash flow statement here and fill in the balance sheet here to get this imbalance ironed out at the bottom of the balance sheet. Good luck. So let's start out over here on the right hand side with the equity schedule. The ending balance here of common equity, we can link this over to the balance sheet here, $46 million there. Now we can link in the beginning balance to the ending balance from year zero like this. When we get here, all we need is a sum function. So we're going to hit alt equals for an auto sum and hit enter. Now we can grab this formula, highlight across, control R for fill right, and this one across control R as well. So this completes the corkscrew for common equity. Now let's look at retained earnings. So the ending balance in year zero is over here, five million. That becomes the beginning balance for year one, like this. Net income, we should be able to link that all the way over. We can actually link to the top of the cash flow statement right here, which would be easy. And down here, we'll use alt equals for an auto sum again. Now we can pull across like this, control R for fill right, and here, a fill right as well. Now we can see how a share buyback would impact the cash flow schedule. We can link this all the way across to this particular line right here, and then highlight across and control R. And there's where we can see the cash outflow on the cash flow statement. So now across to the balance sheet, and we want to remember that the balance sheet always shows ending balances. So when we're looking for equity capital, we would then go across here for the year one ending balance. For retained earnings, we go across for the year one ending balance as well. Now that those are in place, we can highlight across, hit control R for a fill right. We're all complete and we have a perfect check at the bottom. So the main takeaway here from this exercise is that we can see with the share buyback, it obviously lowers equity capital by 5 million. We can also see that it's a cash outflow and it would appear here in the cash from financing sections right there. Now in this exercise, we're using the same Excel template as the previous exercise, but as you can see, we've transferred over to the dividend tab. You may find this pretty straightforward after the last exercise, but here we wanna see how the payment of a dividend would impact the three financial statements. So you're actually free to build in or fill in the gray sections in any order you wish, but the easiest way to attack it would probably be to start over here, complete the equity schedule. That'll give you everything that you need to complete the balance sheet and the cash flow statement. Good luck with it, and we'll see you soon. All right, let's get started with this equity schedule in the common equity section. Well, the ending balance at year zero is over here. It's going to be $46 million right there. We can link the beginning balance back to the ending balance for year zero. Here we're gonna do an auto sum, so alt equals, enter, and then we can pull these across like this and like this, and now we can link net income over to the top of the cash flow statement here. Pull that across, control R for a fill right. Payout ratio is going to be the dividend divided by the net income, like that. And then we can highlight across, control R for a fill right. Next up, retained earnings. So we wanna link in here, link this across to $5 million, gives us our starting point. Then we can link the beginning balance over to this like that. The net income, we just had that a moment ago up here, so we can link there. Now we want the dividends to come out as being negative. So we'll say equals negative, the dividend, which is right there. And now we're gonna do an auto sum with alt equals, just like that. Now we can grab this whole block, highlight across, control R for a fill rate. Now let's look to our cash flow statement here in the same section, cash from financing. Our share buyback happened here, but the payment of dividends is gonna be here. We're gonna link that across to this line right here. And then we can 
highlight across and control R for fill right. Again, it's a cash outflow for the payment of that dividend. So it's a negative figure. Now we can link here to ending balances first for equity capital, which is not changing at all. And then we want to link to retained earnings, which is right here. Once we have these two highlight across control R for a fill right. Again, the main takeaway here is that we still have a cash outflow happening. It's happening on a different line item versus the share buyback, which would have been right there. We can see that equity capital is not changing at all because the company is not buying back any shares, but the payment of the dividend did have an impact here on retained earnings. We really hope that you enjoyed taking this course as much as we enjoyed putting it together and sharing it with you. One of the things that we were able to learn in this course is that we can understand now what capital investment is and why it increases a company's assets. We were also able to learn very common metrics that are used by companies in order to evaluate different investments. We were also able to cover the business life cycle and how that impacts the funding life cycle, namely as business risk increases access to debt funding increases. We were also able to look at the different types and sources of both equity and debt that are available to companies for financing. We also know now how to optimize a company's capital structure, essentially by minimizing the company's weighted average cost of capital, or WAC. And finally, when a company cannot find appropriate investments to invest in, we understand now the advantages and disadvantages of the different ways a company can return capital to shareholders. Once again, we hope you enjoyed this course as much as we enjoyed preparing and sharing the materials with you. And we hope to see you in new courses soon.